Welcome into Rogue Football. I'm your host, Jordan DeLugo. Thanks so much for tuning in today. Right now, we have got our Buffalo Bills seven-round 2024 mock draft. Really thought this might be the year for the Bills, right? In 2023, it was not, unfortunately. You know, the injuries, especially on the defensive side of the ball, they really were crippling in a lot of ways for the Bills, but they still managed to have a pretty impressive run in 2023. Maybe they could have gotten over the hump if they had had a little bit better injury luck, but right now they're still at the top of the league when you talk about having a superstar quarterback, good offensive line, good weapons throughout your offense, well coached on both sides of the ball, lots of defensive talent, but there are some things that they're going to need to work out this offseason. There's no question about that. Um, their cap space situation, right? They're currently, according to overthecap.com, negative 43.8 million in cap space. So they're going to have to restructure a lot of deals, figure out how to get under the cap and make this all work. Obviously doable. You see teams do it every year, but this is a team in a championship window. You obviously restructure Josh Allen. That's what teams do with these big quarterback contracts pretty much every offseason. Several other players you're going to need to either restructure or move on from to get under the cap. I do hope they keep Rasul Douglas, who is a, a cut candidate, but a guy who I think that they need right now based on their corner room. Uh, you're not really going to add a ton of impact free agents, if any. Kind of try to keep this football team together for 2024. Draft some guys that can come in early and make a long-term impact. Um, and, and then in 2025, I think you have more of the ability to kind of do a little bit of a roster reset if you want to with some of the contracts you currently have, have some more flexibility, some more cap space to work with. But I think as of now, you're trying to kind of stick with what you had in 2023, carry it over to 2024, get some early impact guys in the draft and guys that can help sustain this roster around Josh Allen for a long time. And I think the Bills, uh, they have a chance to do that here in the draft. 10 draft picks as of right now. That is big for them. You know, two fifths and two six or three six, excuse me. You can either use them all or, or try to get feisty with some trades. We'll see how it all kind of plays out here. Uh, the draft needs for the Bills right now wide receiver, edge, defensive tackle, you know, some guys potentially moving on in free agency across that defensive front at D tackle and at edge, at wide receiver. Uh, safeties, good football players, but they're up there in age, right? Uh, so those, I think, are your top needs, and I think it's a good year to address those needs in the draft. They do have some potential changes down the road across the offensive line uh, with expiring contracts, um, but even though there are some clear needs here that we just mentioned, don't go reaching. That's not what we do here at Rogue Football. We're going to try to get value at every single spot that we possibly can here, not reach for need, uh, but get some guys that can come in and have an impact early and long term. So without further ado, let's get into this mock draft. The Buffalo Bills first pick is at 28 overall. I've got them going wide receiver. Uh, Keon Coleman out of FSU. Look, in this mock draft over at NFL Mock Draft Database, you had the top three guys go off the board. Brian Thomas Jr. was also off the board. Uh, for me, Keon Coleman is wide receiver four in this class. He's 20 years old. They just do not make a lot of dudes that are this athletic at six foot four, 215 pounds. I mean, he's got incredible hops, basketball background. He's very twitchy for his size as well. You'll see him as a punt returner. He'll be able to juke guys out of their shorts as a guy catching uh, underneath routes, being able to make guys miss in space. He has the best hands in this class, bar none, regardless of who you're talking about, including Marvin Harrison Jr. I think Keon Coleman has the best hands in this class. Uh, played through injury all year. I think he is going to be a star in this league. I think the NFL, if he falls to 28, is going to regret letting Buffalo pair him up with Josh Allen, Stephon Diggs, and the rest of this offensive talent because I think it could make for real problems um, you know, down the road in the postseason. Teams trying to deal with Stephon Diggs, deal with Dalton Kincaid, deal with Josh Allen running around making plays. You've got Keon Coleman, and you've got the rest of the supporting cast, you know, Cook really coming on strong. I think that that could really set the Bills' offense over the top, make them uh, – as hard to stop as anyone in the league, and they pretty much already are. So I just think it would give Stephon Diggs some support, give Josh Allen a steady, reliable pair of hands to throw the football to in money situations outside of Stephon Diggs and uh, kind of set them up for success in 2024 and long term. Now, getting down to this second pick, the Ravens, they offer a trade-up 
They offer their second and third to get up to 60 overall, right? You're going to take that all day at 62 overall where you trade down to here. This might not be a popular pick right now. I don't see many outlets, you know, having Bo Braid out of Maryland, the safety as a day two guy. Uh, But for me, he's an early second round grade. You're getting him here at the end of the second round. Bo Braid is a player that you can move all around the formation, whether you're talking about single high, whether you're talking about a split zone, right? Um, You can move him into the box. He is a ferocious run defender, plays the game uh, with supreme energy and effort. I think he can fly around the football field. I think he's very good in coverage as well, playing off the line of scrimmage, a guy that I think is going to become a star at safety. And the great thing about him is you get him in here with his natural football ability and instincts, and uh, you kind of have him learn a little bit under the two guys you have who have been so steady for so long. You know, Jordan Poyer and Micah Hyde, if there's an injury, he can come in. But have him sit and learn in year one, and then he will be ready to attack NFL offenses You know, at some point in year one or in year two for you. I think Bo Braid, getting him at 62 overall, would end up being a steal in the long run. Uh, at 93 overall, where the uh, Baltimore Ravens traded that pick, Edge Marshawn Nealon out of Western Michigan. This is a guy that uh, stacked good seasons at Western Michigan as a rusher, as a as a run defender as well, went to the senior bowl, measured really well. He's six foot three. He's 268 pounds, has 34 inch arms. He is explosive. He has a bag of pass rush moves. He has natural leverage on his side. I think that this is a prospect. Had he been playing at a power five school, there's no chance he would be available in the third round. I really don't think that he necessarily will be available at this point in the draft, but a lot of edge players, a lot of talent at a lot of key positions here in this 2024 NFL draft. Maybe Marshawn Nealon does fall down the board, and if you're able to get him in the third round, I think that's an absolute steal. He's a guy I've been mock drafting to a lot of teams, and again, a guy that I think is going to immediately have an impact in the NFL. At 99 overall, the original pick for the Buffalo Bills in the third round, defensive tackle Tyler Davis out of Clemson. As I mentioned, I think the Bills are going to be losing some beef on the interior of that defensive line. You still have Ed Oliver, obviously, who you use more of a penetration style. I think Tyler Davis can come in here and really help uh, seal up that interior in terms of being able to stop the run, be really stout, and be able to one-gap, two-gap, and just, again, stop the run. Uh, That's going to be critical for you down the stretch in the playoffs. There's going to be teams that try to get after it with the running game. You've seen the Chiefs do it. You've seen other teams do it. The Bills need to be able to stop the run, and Tyler Davis can help you out in a big way there. At 129 overall, I mentioned there's going to be down the road some some, uh, contracts expiring on the offensive line. Offensive tackle Garrett Greenfield out of South Dakota State. I think he has starter potential. I think he should be a day two guy. He's uh, got tremendous size and length. He's a good athlete. He does not allow anything in pass protection, and uh, he knows how to get those hands high and tight, got good punch power. So I think he could be a real steal at that point in the draft for the Buffalo Bills. At 159 overall, we're getting another safety. Uh, like I said, both of those safeties you have, tremendous players in Jordan Poyer and Micah Hyde, but they're up there in age. They're not going to last forever. So we go get Keaton Oladapo out of Oregon State, a player who uh, kind of projects more as a strong safety, whereas Bo Braid, I think more of a free safety. But I think both of those guys can do both. I think they can definitely you know, align in that too high shell as well and get the job done. Oladapo is a great run defender. He's very long. He's he's not really a rangy player, but the fluidity he has in his movements, the ability to change direction at his size, a uh, bigger type of safety that can go do that. And, and survive in coverage, survive in man coverage, zone coverage, fire downhill, thump. Uh, I really love what he brings to the table. So again, two guys you can bring in as the long-term replacements that could also provide some value in year one at safety in Keaton Oladapo and Bo Braid out of Maryland. Uh, I think that uh, getting those two guys where they're selected here for the Buffalo Bills would be a coup. At 162 overall, guard Mason McCormick out of San Diego State. You know, Garrett Greenfield's teammate, they played right next to each other. These are two guys that I think can potentially help your um, offensive line be sustainable long term. McCormick is is a 
he's a nasty football player. He was made to play on the interior of the offensive line. He really is a mauler in there and a guy that I think Bills fans would very quickly grow to love. At 198 overall, defensive back Jerry and Jones. I list him at defensive back even though he's technically really a nickel corner for the Florida State Seminoles because there are plenty of reps where you see him kick outside. I think he has the size, the physicality, the explosiveness to potentially play anywhere for you. And I know that you've got your nickel in Teron Johnson, but just a versatile defensive back who I think can really help improve the short-term and long-term outlook of the depth and, and overall talent in the back end on your secondary. And again, you just you do not want to have another situation where you feel like you can't survive the postseason with some of the injuries you have. I think Jerry and Jones helps out in that regard in a big way. At 202 overall, defensive lineman Gabe Hall out of Baylor. Uh, I've said it a couple times here. There's a lot of potential flux for the Buffalo Bills on their defensive front. I think Gabe Hall uh, has the the profile, the size profile, the athletic profile, and then had a really good week at the Senior Bowl. He's had some up and downs on his tape at Baylor, but a guy who has length, has explosiveness off the line, can get that swim move rolling and get into the backfield on a flash. If you develop him, I think he could be a really impressive uh, prospect long-term and, and a steal potentially at 202 overall. At 206, this is a very deep wide receiver class, a uh, class that I think can help the Bills out a ton and help a lot of teams out. But I've got them taking wide receiver Xavier Weaver out of Colorado, played at USF before that. A guy who, a little bit over six foot, 180 pounds, a little bit lighter, but I think that he can kind of help take the top off the defense and be one of those downfield threats, but also does not put the football on the ground much. He has an impressive drop rate, but he's also got length. He's got quickness. He's got athleticism. A guy who I think can really help you again at the second and third level Take some pressure off Stephon Diggs, Dalton Kincaid, and Keon Coleman now. 246 overall, we're adding another running back to the mix, and Isaac Guerendo out of Louisville. He's going to be an absolute blazer, but he's six foot, 225 pounds, really fast football player, used to play wide receiver, so maybe gives you some more versatility there. But a guy who I think would complement James Cook's skill set well, but even when you're getting Cook off the field, you've still got that home run ability because Guerendo – Uh, Once he gets to top speed, there's not a lot of folks that can catch him out there. So that's it for the Buffalo Bills seven-round mock draft here. Ton of picks for them. We were able to land some really critical pieces moving forward, you know, uh, re-infuse some young talent at safety behind your two stars. Keon Coleman at 28 overall. Again, I think the NFL would be making a massive mistake by letting him fall that far and then letting Josh Allen and and, and this offense uh, get him installed there and Marshawn Nealand at 93 overall with that trade with the Ravens another steal Tyler Davis really helping you reinforce that defensive front and I love the idea of getting Garrett Greenfield and Mason McCormick to the same NFL team two guys that did a really good job at South Dakota State on the left side of that offensive line but look I'd love to know what you think if you're a Buffalo Bills fan please drop a comment in the comment section below can also hit me up on Twitter at Jordan DeLugo. And if you enjoy the content here, please like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. Y'all have a good one.